hello hello guys this is Shar. welcome back to the channel thank you so much for returning now this is a quick review about love and marriage huntsville from last night now it was a pretty good episode i must say i was thoroughly entertained um <clears throat> and i will first start off by saying that male i think she came not necessarily with an agenda but she was like, in her head, I think she said, that they're not going to be capping on me tonight. You know what I mean? She had already mapped it out to the Fletchers. Like, don't be pairing me and dumb dumb together. Don't constantly keep, you know, pairing us up or having us sit together. I want to be far away from him. She was like, you okay with that, Chris? And he was like, yeah, Miss Rogers. <laughs> so um, I think she was like, you know what? I'm I'm clapping back on, you know, whoever claps at me or, you know, I'm I'm letting my true feelings um be known just like everyone does me. Um so I feel like that was her sentiment. Now, the episode starts off or picks back up on them um initially arriving to Houston and um you know, everybody's just gathered around just talking or whatever so going right to the first sit down um sit down dinner everyone is at the table and right away they focus in on marcel i'm sorry martel martel has on martel is it me or is Martel starting to look more and more like Marlene? Like, he's not as handsome as he once was, in my opinion. And I feel like it's because he's so stressed and he's so damn diabolical. He's starting to look ugly a little bit now. And he went and got this surgery on his eyes. I I don't know. He's just starting to look a little tight. Like, he's starting to look more like Marlene. But anyway, so they light in on him. They focus in on this ring. He got it on. And they like, where you get the ring from? Where you get the ring from? Who's the ring? What the? And so he's like, wishful thinking. Anyway, <laughs> and the man sitting right in front of Kimmy, and Kimmy turns to um, Mel and asks Mel, "Is that his wedding ring?" And Mel like, "I don't know. I haven't even looked down there. Haven't even looked at him. Don't even care. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know." So, um, and he had already said wishful thinking. So there it is. Like, yes, that's his old wedding ring. Why the fool got it on? Only God and he knows. Okay. And so after that, um, they all continue to talk. Obviously the, um, conversation, uh, switched toward Maurice making all those crazy comments earlier this year, um, when he did the interview with Carlos King talking about Kimmy is admirable for suffering through it and just rolling over and suffering through it and getting through it for him, for the greater good of the marriage and for the greater good of his satisfaction and not to her own, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and, um, uh, Kimmy was basically like, you know, people just don't realize how things come out. That, you know, things come out differently than how they mean them in their head, and that could be true, but I don't think it's true in this case. You know what I mean? I think what he said is what he said, and what he said is what he meant. Hence, why um, Mel was like, in so many words, she was like, it's not even really important about what he said for real for real i mean uh, how he said it what's important is that you know those were his actual feelings those were his real feelings that's what you need to be concerned with <laughs> you know what i mean like you need to get down to the bottom of those are his actual feelings and that's what's really important and kimmy didn't like that it's the truth it's the hard truth be Kimmy did not like that. And they showed her expression. You know, they had that little funny sound, that little funny little, it's not music, but it's some type of little funny sound when everyone says something that's kind of like out of the way or it's like a dig or something. They put that little sound out. But um, 
yes, it was, she was pissed and they showed her expression and she didn't like it. And, um, while Mel was actually saying that, like, that was more of a concern. What he actually means was in his heart. That is when Maurice tried to step up and was like, well, you know what? I, I do apologize. I shouldn't have never said that. I wish I could take that back. Well, okay. Like, and then when he said that, Kimmy was like a little girl, like how when, um, a dad tells his little baby girl, like, you look so cute in that little dress, in that Sunday dress, honey. And how the little girl kind of twinkles away, like, <laughs> with a little smile on her face, like, <laughs> like, oh, my daddy said I was cute today or pretty today. That's how Kimmy act when she was, like, chopping up her food on her plate, putting her food in her mouth with her fork, like, <laughs> Like, my husband didn't apologize. Well, first of all, he had already did that little apology anyway. Like, I should take it back and da-da-da-da. I wish I had never talked to Carlos King. And I wish I never had said all those things. But it's like Mel said. it. Like I said, it's the hard truth. It's about that's how he really felt. And that's what you need to be having a conversation with him about. Like, what's up? You know. But, you know, they, the Scots... Those four, they are, they're never going to touch the real issues, you know, that that obviously the, the world sees amongst the four of them in their, you know, marriages. They're never really going to touch on those hard things. And we don't expect them to touch on the show, you know, real life hard things. However, we would know if they're doing better in a better place, how they're interacting when we do see them on the show, even though it's little snippets and clips of their life. You know, we'll see that the relationship is a little better based on communication and what we see. And it's never better. Like, it's gotten progressively worse from the first season with both Scott marriages. Did they not? So anyway, moving on, that was that, you know, like I said, Mel got she spoke her mind, she spoke her truth, which it was, um, Maurice's truth. Like this is what he really felt. And that's why he said that ish. And that's the really, that's the big concern. But, um, moving on, they continued on with a different topic, obviously talking about Letitia being pregnant and her taking a freaking pregnancy test. Now, as far as this goes, I think this girl was a complete and total fool for doing that on camera. I mean, if she was going to, if she really had concerns that she thought she was pregnant, I feel like she should have kept it to herself. Um, yeah, kept it to herself and took, bought one, took it, found out what it was. Obviously, it was a negative and threw that boy away and didn't say nothing else about it because does she know who she married to? Like she, she gives him the benefit of the doubt. And unfortunately you can't, she can't, she can't give him the benefit of the doubt. He is who he is. Like he shows you who he is and he shows you who he is through his actions and what he says. Like he's going to be an a-hole. He's not going to be understanding. He's not going to see it from your point of view and what he says goes and it's his way. And it ain't no other way. Now, I don't understand why she can't see that. Everyone else does. The cast does. The viewers of the show do. Everyone sees it except for her. And that's unfortunate. Because if you knew like how everybody else knew, you should have kept that to yourself. Because he's going to run. He's going to ride with this to the wheels fall off. Probably to the very, you know, this show will be off the air. He'll still be bringing it up and, and holding it against you. And he's probably deep down so happy that she did that because now he can continue to do what he does, which is mess around, allegedly, you know, and now he can have that in the back of his mind. Like, she cheated. You know, she taking pregnancy tests. I didn't have a vasectomy. She can't get pregnant, you know, if I didn't have a vasectomy, yada, 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 right? Like, he's going to continue to use that as a catalyst for him to cheat and not feel bad about it in my opinion and that's why she should have kept it to herself and um 
you know, Kimmy kept saying, well, you know, you, I don't even know how Kimmy talks. It's like she, she's political, but she tries to be so professional and using all these crazy words. They're not crazy, but it's just like, girl, just talk regular. You know what I mean? She has to say that, you know, you have to, you know, be a fool to think that your husband that has had a vasectomy is not going to feel a way about you taking a pregnancy test like him thinking or not being sure what you've done or haven't done it's fair it's like oh Kimmy I cannot stand Kimmy anymore but um yeah and I do understand what Kimmy means to a degree like that is the first thing that you know a man is going to go to right especially him seeing how that's how he moves and that's how he gets down but you also have to think like has she shown you anything that she's doing differently is she moving differently is she acting secretively is she doing little stuff is she getting up in the middle of the night saying she gotta use the bathroom and then you go check on her is she on the bathroom on the phone you know what i mean like is she you know leaving more is she leaving different hours of the day than she normally did is she dressing more provocatively or sexy you know when she's not around you um is she buying lingerie a lot you know all these little things you can kind of pick up on you know what i mean is she more distant is she not really and that is a big telltale sign like if she is not on your neck trying to figure out where you are and why then you know she off doing something else because when a woman stops caring about what her own man is doing day to day then you already know something's up she's occupied you know what i mean so that is a telltale sign and that's what he should be asking himself is any of that different and he know in his heart of heart she ain't moving no differently not at all not at all and he knows that and she know he knows that. But again, she don't know who she married to because she should have known that he was going to ride this to the wheels fall off. So, you know, <laughs> Tisha, she's going to hear from about this from here on out. And it, it it's good enough for her because she should know what she's dealing with. And you got to move accordingly to who you dealing with you know i mean us as women we know our men we know our husbands and we have to pick our battles and move accordingly you know to keep peace uh so it won't get worse so it doesn't escalate and she has just really escalated this unless unless this was just a part of a storyline for them because technically they really ain't got nothing else popping off you know they can't effectively or honestly keep showing us the progression of these so-called quote-unquote work sites these work sites they can't continually show us that because there's not anything really going on with them because they're not really doing any work with them you know what I mean? That's my opinion. So, because, I mean, you could keep showing us the progression of this building and that and this and that, what you're working on. Um, but they're not. So, you know, to be totally honest, this could have just been um, a sit down between the two of them saying this is going to be, we're going to use this as a storyline toward the mid part of the season. You know, you doing a pregnancy test and, and you know, we'll pick it up from there whatever else we're going to talk about as a couple on the show so you know I wouldn't be surprised if it was you know all cap and just the storyline for them on the show right so after that they all dismiss from the table and the girls go one way the guys go to another the guys go off to play I think uh dominoes or something like that or cards whatever and they continue to, to discuss this whole pregnancy testing and if she's doing anything outside of the marriage or not. Okay. And so then the ladies, they go to the hot tub. They all meet up there. Mel is the last to come in. Mel actually looks really, really cute. I loved her little two-piece. Very, very simple and plain, but really, really cute nonetheless. I love the baby blue with the dark blue cover-up little cover-up dress that looks like it was like um like a a little mesh material 
um, a little see-through-ish, and it was very, very cute. And she came on with sunglasses or whatever, and right away, Tisha was like, oh, you're trying to look like Martell with the sunglasses. What's up with that? You guys are twins. You look alike. Okay. No, they don't look alike. It was, it's called swag. It's like called, you know, uh, 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 creating the moment. Like, you know, like it or love it, we're on the show. We're filming. She knows that. I want to look cute. This is the look I want to have, you know. I want to look chic. I want to come to the pool with my cover up, my two piece, my sunglasses on, even though it's dark or a little shady. This is my look. This is how I want to enter this scene. Don't y'all get that? Like y'all are on a show. They don't get that. They're so plain and mundane. <laughs> they don't get it. And um, the camera panned over to uh Kimmy, you know, you know, watching her or looking at her coming in and she was just like had both elbows on her knees, you know, looked like she was playing with her nails or something, kept looking up at Mel and then looking down at her nails, looking up at Mel, looking down at her nails, like she wanna be uh not interested, but she can't help but to look. One of those, right? And so um then Mel got into the hot tub you know, starting float, started floating around a little bit and immediately, you know, got her phone to take pictures or maybe she was doing videos or maybe she was going on live. Um, and, you know, right away they were like, especially Tisha, well, this girl is just so full of herself. Like she loves herself. No, it's called having a following. Okay, I am out. I am on a little vacay. I am in the hot tub. I'm looking cute. I want to uh, remember this moment. I want to share this moment with my fans and my followers on IG or whatever platform that she wants to put them on. That's what people do when they have a fan base, when they have a following on their social media, when they go places and they're looking cute or whatever the case may be. They take photos and or videos and they share them. That is the time that we're living in. Okay, it's not necessarily all about she thinks she's cute i mean everyone thinks themselves is cute any damn way right so it's not an obsession it's just that that's where we are as a society that's what we do we go on vacay we take pictures we take videos and we share them in the moment so yes i mean they should really come up off of that like she's like obsessed with herself it's not an obsession with herself it's just that she wants to take pictures of herself or video and share them on her social media platforms it's just that simple but they're so you know they and that shows how they really truly feel about male they think male they are already called her bougie back in season one and that's how they really feel about Mel. They think she's bougie. They think she probably thinks she's better than them. And now we see that, you know, as far as Tisha, she feels like she feels like uh, Mel is obsessed with herself. And it's like, girl, anyway, you just don't get nothing. She just doesn't get it. But anyway, so Mel is out there in the um, only one that's actually in the water at that Um so she's out there um, floating around and, you know, they're talking, having a little girl chit chat. And she discloses that, you know, she didn't sat up here and had four, <laughs> had four kids with a man that did not make her, you know what, did not make her climax for the most part. And they're, they went nuts. Like they, oh my God, you were married to him all those years and then nothing possible. And how man and that you lying, you had to. I mean, it's like, okay. And, and it was like a surprise. It was like a shock. But um, I believe Mel is doing that to get... I, mean, I feel like in this um, trip, she was playing hardball. And she was taking shots at people like they do her. Because she already knows these women are going to go back, pull talk with their husbands. And it's going to get back to um, Martell. You know what I mean? Because Martell always saying, taking shots at her and saying a little this and a little that. 
and he didn't do it for her and he she wouldn't do this sexual thing and da 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 so yeah no she paying him back by saying hey i'm married to him all those years and had those four kids and he ain't made me do nothing period now is she telling the truth i don't know i really don't know i think like I really feel like she's fibbing. Like I really think she's just trying to get under Martel's skin because she knows it's gonna get back to him. But I mean, who knows? Only she knows. Um, you know, it may be true. She, he may not have ever done that for her. Who knows? But um, so yeah, they're they 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 chewed on that for a minute, and um, it was another little thing that Tisha said that um i can't even remember what she said it was something else that tisha said like a little short little question and um i remember miss fletcher um nail she had um helped uh male answer that question like yeah 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 she did that uh, oh when tisha asked her um when tisha asked male had you um did he try to apologize to you about his behavior and how he was acting acting in the marriage or lacking did he try to do better and um and she was like did you tell him about that like how you felt and nail also helped Mel to say yes like yeah she told him you know told him her thoughts and how she felt or whatever so you know just to let you them know like male has discussed this many times and has discussed it and um confided in nail and nail knows like yeah she did do that and um she went on uh tisha went on to ask her like did he change did he try to change and male was like no <laughs> and honestly i really feel like in the very very beginning i feel like martel did try now did it last long probably not but i feel like he did try like he honestly wanted to make the change but he just is not a strong enough man to make the change and it's just some men out there like that like they give in they succumb to the bs with the whole cheating thing and whatever it's lacking for him in the marriage and what i feel my opinion was lacking for him was just that He's not, he's an underachiever. Like we see that now and we see that male is the complete opposite. She's an overachiever and she's driven and she moves like that every single day. And because of her discipline and her, you know, her, the way she's driven, it, it brings results. Like she gets the job done. She gets another job because she's done so well on that job. And then because of those jobs and those accolades or the money she's made, it leads to other opportunities, which opens the door for her to do this and do that. And before you know it, she's operating three, four, five different businesses. They're all doing well. And, and we see that is how male moves. That's not how Martel moves. Martel does not have that in him to move that way and to garner those kind of results. So, and I feel like that is what um, his problem was with male. I believe he truly loved male, but because deep down he's kind of like tripping that he feels like he's less than and didn't know how to deal with that so he ended up messing around with a woman that's really nothing like male and you know she hasn't she don't got no kind of drive like how male has or the business ackerman and i don't want to say she's below male because you know that's rude but you know she's just a completely totally different type of woman and he probably does feel superior with um coleslaw you know she he just he probably does so and and that's what feeds him you know what i mean like everybody say well i don't understand why or how he can be with that woman she's nothing like me well that's why like he needed someone that was somewhat I hate to say beneath, but kind of beneath him a little bit to feel big and to feel important. And so that's why it would have never worked between him and Mel going forward because, you know, she was just, she was moving too fast for him and getting too big, so to speak, and just kind of like growing out of him, um, far as business wise. And he couldn't stand that instead of, um, 
And his mindset wasn't to get on the ball and get on the same page with her and move like her. His mindset was like, forget her, I'll, I'll get someone else that appreciates me or makes me feel important or whatever. So those are his hangups and he can deal with it. And the ink is dry on the divorce paper. So don't, don't nobody really care about how Martell really feels about, you know, his real feelings toward Mel at this point. So, um, yeah. And so moving on from that, um, they ended up trying to have a play date where the Fletchers was putting together some, um, building exercises, some little games for the group ends up getting a call from Kiki and, um, Kiki basically wants to come. I thought Kiki was asked to come originally, like how the how the Fledgers asked everybody else. Kiki just wanted to come because she felt left out. Kiki, you should stay home, basically. Now, I, I, you know, I don't know. The jury is out with Kiki now because now I feel like Kiki is messy and all over the place. And I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. She's just all over the place. She's all over the place. It does seems like it does seem like she, you know, she fibs a bit. It does seem like she forgets what she says. Um, you know, she's all over the place. Like I said, you know, I didn't even talk about that mess with her telling the blogger guy something, all this mess about what she felt about male because she felt like male didn't support her. And then as we see on the next episode, it looks like Kiki came and she actually stayed unless she left later on in that particular episode that's coming on next week. I don't know. We don't know yet. We'll see it next week. But it's like, girl, it's, it's not Mel's trip. It's the Fletcher's trip. Mel is outnumbered, you know, with all the couples there. She's outnumbered. And even if she wasn't outnumbered, it's not Mel's trip. So she can't govern who stays and who goes. Only the Fletcher's can do that. It's their trip that they put together for all the couples to come. And, you know, Mel, um, Nell, actually, Nell Fletcher, she shouldn't have never let Kiki come in the first place. She should have left her where she was at. The trip is not the place to apologize. If you was going to apologize, you would have did it way back when or did it on your own time. You got the girl number, go over to her house or whatever. You're not using this trip to apologize. That's what I would have told her. Matter of fact, knowing me, I probably wouldn't have even picked up. But this girl done sat up here and invited herself. And I ain't got no problem with Kiki, but I'm just saying. You didn't call and invited yourself. They didn't want you to come. So why did you, why do you want to go anywhere where you wasn't even originally thought of to be invited in the first place? So, yeah, uh, we'll see how the next episode is. But you guys drop down in the comments. Tell me what you think about last night's episode. Do you agree with Neil allowing um, Kiki to come? One. Um, do you feel like Mel was on one when she was like, I'm about to let, I'm about to pop off and I'm about to let people know how I truly feel because don't nobody got no problems with letting me know how they feel about me and what I'm doing. Because I felt like Mel was letting them have it. I really do. And what do you think about um, Kimmy's demeanor toward Mel, did you see the hate? Like, did you see the hateration? Like, she had problems with Mel, didn't really want to pay attention to her, but for whatever reasons why, can't keep her eyes off of her. It's almost like you do feel like it's Beyonce. <laughs> you guys drop down in the comments tell me what you think i didn't want to make this video very long please hit the notifications hit the like button and subscribe until next time guys thank you bye